In this video, I'm going to talk about what it's possible to learn beyond just the for look last layer algorithms. Okay, so this first tip is just a really simple way to get a lot more one look OLL cases uh, without learning any new algorithms. And that is to basically go through your three by three OLLs and apply them to the Megaminx and see what sort of patterns that you get on the Megaminx. And then all you need to do is kind of memorize those patterns and uh, memorize which algorithms belong with those patterns. And you'll already know those algorithms, so you won't need to worry about learning new finger tricks or anything like that at all. For a large number of these algorithms, the recognition of the OLL case itself is very, very similar to what it is like on a 3x3. So let's say here we've got this block like this, and these two, and these two at the back. It looks very, very similar to just the 8 move T OLL algorithm on our 3x3 cube, instead of, but instead of having just a single edge oriented here, we have an edge corner and an edge oriented like this. And we would be pretty safe, it would be a pretty safe guess to just assume that our R U R prime U prime R prime F R F prime algorithm works to solve that OLL case, in, and indeed it does. There are plenty more situations where this sort of thing applies on the Megaminx. So let's say here we have an example where we've got these three pieces oriented, and we treat these this edge, corner, and edge just as a simple solved edge. Then we have this kind of P shape with these two oriented at the front, with these two last layer stickers on the front and this one here and this one here, which is just our algorithm r prime u prime f, u r u prime r prime f prime r that we know from 3x3 OLL. So that's a really easy way to get a lot more one look OLL cases on the Megaminx, and we can even use some of our PLL algorithms in the same way. So for example here, we have something that looks like, looks like a Y permutation, and for this specific case, we actually can solve this PLL in one look just using our Y permutation, as opposed to solving the edges and then solving the corners. And obviously, you know, learning PLL recognition is a bit more tricky on the Megaminx, but for cases such as these, where we've got these two blocks and these two, and we've got this edge corner edge block at the back here, um, you know, the recognition is pretty straightforward. And so here, our Y permutation actually solves this case. When you're doing this though, it is important to be aware of the different behavior of pieces around the Megaminx last layer during PLL, as opposed to on a 3x3. Three three. So on a 3x3 three three cube, if you execute a Y permutation twice, then it will bring you back to a solved state, but here, if we, ex we have to execute a Y permutation three times to bring the, the, to bring the puzzle back to a solved state. So, you know, if we have this case with the block over here on this left hand side with the same two pieces from our Y permutation solved before, the same two blocks, then we can do something like the inverse of our Y permutation to solve that case. Beyond these sorts of easy ways to learn more one look OLL and one look PLL cases, there are of course many other cases for Megaminx PLL and OLL. Um, definitely uh, the first thing to learn, like on the 3x3, is Megaminx full PLL, and there are over 150 algorithms for that, although some of them you will know from things like, from things like EPLL and CPLL. However, learning full PLL is a very big task, and it's only going to have an incremental impact on your actual solve times. So unless you're super serious about the Megaminx and you know interested in getting to world-class solve times, or if you just like alg learning algorithms in general, then unless you're you know either one of those things, then I probably would advise against you know spending the time to learn all of the 150 plus Megaminx PLL algorithms.